give it up for our family, starting off with Emmanuel Roger. And next we have Kensenia Solo. And next we have Rachel Scarson. Last but not least, this man you should give a special round of applause for. He created the series. Please give it up for Jade Firestone! Hi guys! Hey, hey! Hello. <laughs> so, good morning and welcome to day two of your London adventure. Thank you. So, how have you found coming over to London and meeting all of the Law School fans? I mean, how's it been for you? All of you? Bloody brilliant! <laughs> Sorry, that was loud. But, see, you picked up the accent. I can see a whole We're trying. It's all Rachel. We're just trying to learn from Rachel. <laughs> I tell you what, I can see a whole British-themed episode next time. You, you bet your bottom line. Alright, alright. Right now they're all looking at me. <laughs> But there were a lot of options, but that one 
stuck out the most to me. It was because of that that we decided on the theory that she would always have one-liners. So that was an accident, but it worked well. And how, so I'm in the middle of the and how surprised have you all been by the show's popularity, and, and particularly for those who have joined later in the series? Were you aware of their popularity when you first joined the show? No, I mean, I, I'd heard of Lost Girl, and um, I knew people who watched it, and joining it, I think I had an idea that it was an established, popular show. But I remember, I was saying to Jay the other day, I remember the night season three premiered and seeing on Twitter that it was trending number one worldwide and just thinking, oh my goodness, the show is so much bigger than I thought. And it's just been a total thrill to, to join and be a part of something that, you know, it's so rad. Well, well. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to say Bo and Kenzie. <laughs> I'm gonna go with... Uh, Not to be selfish. <laughs> I, I mean, it's say, say uh, Bex and the Morrigan. <laughs> that's true. Okay, well that's, that's competition. Damn it! Which is Bruce and uh, oh, Kenzie. Yeah, that uh, okay. If you know the guy Bruce in the show, he just came in my office one day and I looked up and I said, "Oh my God, I gotta make a character for you." And I said, "I want you to pick Kenzie up and carry her on her shoulders one day." We tried, <laughs> but I just thought I called him Pinky in the Brain. That's true. Okay, I vote. I vote that one. Put Bo Kenzie. <laughs> And for each of you then, I'm off to the side here now. Um, if you can have any guest star on the show, well, who would it be and why? I would love to have um, Adam Driver. He's on a show called Girls on HBO. He's such a cool actor. Um, you never know what to expect from him. And every time I watch that show, I go, God, he'd make a really good fay. Do you know him, Jay? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Okay, look him up. He's cool. <laughs> I think uh, Johnny Depp should come in as Vex's long lost brother. <laughs> Perfect. No. Or, or Marilyn Manson. No, 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 Marilyn Manson, no. Marilyn Manson was going to do this show and he let me down. But Johnny Depp. <laughs> like, wait, well, he let me down because of Johnny Depp. They went out for tattoos together. Oh, and seriously, I, we were having the behind the scenes of Lost Girl. Yeah, it was behind the scenes. Marilyn Manson was going to do an episode of the show. We were supposed to have dinner, and then he calls me up and he says, "I have to hang out with Deb." Okay. <laughs> and I said, "No, no, no, come on, we have dinner." No, 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 I have to hang out with Deb. I'll call you later. <laughs> and then, like, then he calls me half an hour later. Deb's in a bad mood. I got to be a good friend. I'm not coming. And then I said, I'm sitting here in the restaurant, you better show up. And he says, okay, the tattoos burn, we're not coming. They've gotten matching tattoos. All right. Wow. All right. That's like things that girls do together. Yeah. <laughs> they got matching tattoos. They kind of like them more now. Just right. because of it. I see a sitcom in that alone, really. Uh -huh. yeah, actually, I tried to get him to develop an animated sitcom. I got one of the writers from The Simpsons, and he didn't show up for that breakfast either. So. If you could pick any TV series, you could do a crossover with which one? Which would you pick? And you can choose like a reality TV series if you want. The Walking Dead. I honestly, I well, I need to be a zombie. Urgh. She that is a obsessed with zombies. I am. It's true. I'm Frank. I don't get what. Frank's a friend. I'd want to do. Uh... <laughs> you guys okay over there? <laughs> So that there can be all these like CIA phase and and secretly like the government, the United States of America is full of like phase. Am I the only one here? Am I alone in this? All right. I'm I think uh, um, maybe Downton Abbey and uh, Morgan can live in that house. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not, no. Not a good no, take her. no take her. So zombies win. It's amazing. <laughs> all right. 
right, whatever. What about you, Jay? What would you like to cross over? I just want Iron Man to show up. <laughs> That's my, I want to be Iron Man. I can't exaggerate that. I want to be Iron Man. <laughs> That's why Halloween's here. <laughs> Kenzie obviously makes it through those worlds really well as a human on her own. But what power would you choose to think her, like, to have yourself? Which one would you give to Kenzie? I think um, I, I got asked this yesterday and I um, mentioned something about having a power that could stop war, that could stop you know, the light and the dark from fighting. So whatever form that would take, I'm not sure, but I think it would have to be something noble um, if Kenzie was gonna have it, unless it's like a power that has to do with like food. <laughs> so stopping war or something with food. What each of your favorite Kenzie cons are? Kenzie cons? Yeah. Cons. Like cons. No, like cons which is down like dressed up with. Oh. I really loved um, playing the shaman in season two, where I got to wear like the blonde wig and be all like creepy and Russian and weird. And I just remember, <laughs> just remember being on set with Anna. Anna being like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, trust me, just, just, let's just go with this. My favorite's when she walks into the jail and lands one on Bo. Oh god, how can I forget that one? Yeah, alright. <laughs> That's funny. Kenzie, would you please do the respecting the subject? Oh, you did yesterday. Please. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, pressure. Can, I, can you like beatbox for me? Yeah. <laughs> Regret is for suckers, for suckers, for suckers. Regret is for, for suckers. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of big reveals and great 
We shock them on a the regular basis because we don't let them know what's happening too far ahead. So I like to have them really like surprise on a regular basis. We do this read through where we all sit around the table and read the script for the first time and they crack up half the time and they go, oh my god, half the time. So they look surprised. I think the most fun was um, I had gotten the script or maybe spoken to Vanessa, one of our producers, about uh, Dyson and Tamsin driving off the cliff. And so I told I told Chris, I was like, yeah, so you hear like you're dead, man. <laughs> like you're not going off the cliff. And Chris was like, what? 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 <laughs> I'm dead? And I was like, yeah, like we're <laughs> gone, you know? And just like playing into that and Chris freaking out about it. And he was disturbed about oh, yeah, it. Yeah, Chris, Chris, Chris texted me that day and said, I'm buying a new house. Am I gonna be brought back or not? <laughs> <laughs> For each of you, it's been your uh, it's a favorite part of your character that you like the most. <laughs> come on, Eva. come on, Eva. <laughs> um, I love being able to say and do the things that you know you never get to do in, in real life, or say the things that you'd want to say to people um, sometimes, and you have to be politically correct or like, oh, boring. boring. And you get I get to do that with the Morgan. I get to be fun and and mean in a sort of delicious way and torture people like Kenzie. Mm -hmm. Kevin. Are we? Oh I can't talk about that. Um anyways. Yeah. I think I enjoy Kenzie's uh, fashion sense and uh, sense of humor the most. I just love what like Little shit Tamsin is. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> that was her character description. I asked for a girl that had a face of the name Luca that could be a real shit. That's what I was looking for. Judging? <laughs> I watched Lost Girl on my sofa with four bags of popcorn, and I was wondering how each of you watch the finished product if you watch it together. The exact same way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Except like this when I'm on screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of popcorn, some wine, friends, family, you know? I bought them a popcorn machine this year. I know. <laughs> For the pre-show, we, we, we ate a stop. lot of popcorn. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Where's a popcorn machine? I didn't see the popcorn machine. It's now hiding. I just bought, I just bought it for them. <laughs> Is it in your office now? No, <laughs> there's so in my office next week. <laughs> Jay just wanted a popcorn machine that had nothing to do with us. Yeah, actually. And one of the things I do really love about Tamsin is sort of the multi-dimensional character that she is. Um, I love playing Tamsin at her most vulnerable. I think that that's such an interesting part of her. I love I, I love playing Tamsin Garden because it, it allows you to sort of like deconstruct her down to that really vulnerable. I, I love her humor. I love Tamsin's humor, and it's been such a pleasure to get to explore that more. Um, and I was saying this yesterday that I also really want to explore Tamsin's heart a little bit more and what makes her happy. And, um, you know, she has such a purpose for her life, but is really quite devoid of, of happiness. And so I'm excited to sort of um, delve into that more too. So, thank you, Jen. What's your favorite love interest for Boo? <laughs> team. What? Team. We have to pick teams. I always love Team Dyson. Yeah, I think I have to go with that too. All right, wait, wait, we have to do a bit of a vote though. Yeah, okay. Hands up for team? team Dyson. Woo! All right. Hands up for Team Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> See, Dyson wins. I'm sorry, guys. Dyson. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Just the episode, I think it's in season two, when you're all in the in the doll and you all swap bodies. Um, I really like seeing Kenzie and Dyson's body. Um, but if you could swap bodies, if you could choose which character your character swapped bodies with, which one would it be? So if we could all switch bodies with someone on like a character on the show or just like generally? For anybody. <laughs> on the show or generally, either, both, either. <laughs> well,
well, I take this stud muffin over here. <laughs> but on the show, I can switch bags with someone. Probably Chris. It's like ripped. I know, uh, Chris. Yeah, I'm fucking keep that. Yeah, it's got eight pack. True. <laughs> Twelve pack. Yeah. Uh, Vex. Okay, Vex. It's a good choice too. To be an actor, you really have to be passionate about acting. Um, and I suppose producing shows as well. Um, how did you decide to become actors in the producer? You guys go first. Mine was an accident. Mine was sort of a happy accident too. I think I've always loved performing. Um, and I, I fell into acting and um, it was something that I sort of did sporadically as a, as a child, a child, a teenager. And um, took a break from it and then came back. And it was a lot harder when I came back and it, it really focused my desire to to want to be an actor, and it, it really made me claim being an actor as well, because I sort of dabbled in it before, so I never really identified myself as an actor. But um, yeah, it's it's a bloody brilliant thing. Um, I grew up in a family of theater actors and ballerinas, um, and I have grandmothers, and aunts, and cousins who all kind of grew up in the theater. Um, my grandmother is still teaching in the theater, so I grew up in the wings, um, watching mostly the women in my family, and I always wanted to be like that. So for me, um, I never even thought about it. It was kind of something I did from a very early age, and you know, all my friends in high school would be like, God, I don't know what I want to do, and I don't know what I want to study in university, and I would always kind of sit back in those conversations and it, it just never, I had no other options, like this was it. Um, for me, I grew up, I always loved performing. I, I grew up you know, in school doing plays and things and it never really occurred to me that I could actually have a career doing that. Um, and uh, and I kept thinking, oh, do I want to you know, be a lawyer, do I want to you know, be a doctor or whatever, and I was like, no. Just play those on TV. <laughs> so then I did. <laughs> Here we are. What? <laughs> but then it becomes wrong because you're like, well, I played a paramedic, so I got this. <laughs> you know? People are like, you're not actually trained. <laughs> I would like to hear from all of you if there was a moment when you got a script and went like, oh my god. What's the more most memorable? Thank you. A, a lost girl script? Yes. Yes. Again, I, I'm season sorry. I have four. to see season four. I think all of us, every read through, um, felt some sort of. Oh my God! Ah, no! Ah. <laughs> uh, four eleven. Uh, four. I'm just saying it's that. Uh, see, they all get in very big trouble if they answer. This yeah. Four a one, four thirteen, four. We decided to really shake it up, so season four has stunned all the actors and everybody because it's a very different season. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in your massive round of applause for our Bosco panelists.